Merry Christmas. On behalf of the community of Redeemer Lutheran in Boise and Grace in Horseshoe Bend, I wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas during this final Sunday during the season of Christmas. Wherever you are, you are invited to join together in the Sacrament of Holy Communion. We celebrate that on the first Sunday of the calendar month. So at this time, I invite you to find some wine or some grape juice, some bread, some crackers, and have that gathered so it'll be accessible to you when we celebrate Holy Communion, the Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist. Please know that next week, we begin a whole new season, the season of Epiphany. What I like to say, the aha about who Jesus is for us and for the world. That begins next week, the 9th of January. We continue as we begin our worship with a pastoral greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. I invite you now to join in corporate confession. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and with those with whom we worship. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. first reading today is Psalm 66, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. Word of God, way of life. Last Sunday, we heard about John the Baptist in the Gospel of John, and that's where we're going to be spending our time these next few Sundays together. So that was the first kind of 
the opening of John, John the Baptist announcing who Jesus was. This week, John jumps directly into the calling of the disciples. It's a call that's extended uh, not only to those back then, but to us in our day and our place as well. And we'll get more into that in just a few moments. As we begin to read from the Gospel of John, it may be helpful to remember that this Gospel has challenged scholars and the church as a whole for centuries. It is not like the Synoptic Gospels, what we know as Matthew, Mark, and Luke, nor does it appear to be anything related, directly related, to the way the Apostle Paul thought. All their writings, we believe, occurred before this gospel was written. Some scholars believe that what the Gospel of John and how it, ad how it addresses the story of Jesus may be much closer to the three general letters to the church that we know as 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. The gospel has stories not found in other parts of scripture. It contradicts other parts of the synoptic gospels. The question is, is it fact? Is it an allegory? Is it written for Jews? Is it written for, for Gentiles, for Greeks? All these questions are topics of interest for the church and for scholars and have caused a lot of conversation over hundreds and hundreds of years. What I truly believe all agree is that this book attempts to communicate the who and the why of Jesus the Christ. The outline for the gospel is really rather very simple. We first have what is probably best read during the Christmas season, the introductory piece, the overall kind of a summary about the Logos being with God, with the creator of the universe from the beginning and being manifested in who Jesus is. Then we have John the Baptist pointing to Jesus as the Messiah, as the Christ. Then the call of the disciples, which we'll address today. And then the rest of the gospel addresses many signs, many stories about who this Jesus is, the Christ, God. It first comes up in his public ministry, and then it becomes more focused in the second half, the latter half of the gospel, when John is working with Jesus directly teaching his disciples. What I would suggest would be the heading for the reading we will have from John, John 1, verses 35 to 51, I would suggest a heading that would be appropriate would be, Come and see. Come and see. If we read it closely, we'll see that one of the persons invited to be a disciple is not named. It's my opinion, and I think it's more than mine, it's the opinion of many scholars, that this unnamed disciple is meant for those who hear this gospel, for those who read the gospel, to experience the transformation of life as these other disciples in the story. So, as we read through on this day, but also the rest of the gospel, please know that you and I, as hearers and as readers of this story, are invited to come and to see who this Jesus, the Logos of God, truly is. When we are invited into this, you know, we've, we've got all kinds of fun things to, to look at in this text. I'm just going to raise a couple of them. For instance, when the disciples, as well as us, are invited to follow, it's not just language about following Jesus on that day, like where is Jesus walking to for that evening, but it's an invitation 
that is used throughout the gospel, follow, to be a disciple, to follow Jesus as a disciple. That's why. And when Jesus says to those who are interesting about, well, where are you going? Jesus responds by saying, well, just what are you looking for? Again, this play of words is not just where are you going tonight, Jesus, but it means, you know, what do you seek from me if you come to follow me? What do you want from me? What are you looking for if you look at me as the Logos, as the Christ? An additional tricky words in this text deals with the question about wondering, you know, where are we going to stay? The word stay, meno, would be in, in the Greek of that translation. Uh, it's like, where are you going to stay? You want a place to stay. Meno, throughout the gospel, is a word that talks about where does Jesus reside? Where does the Christ stay in life? And the answer we'll hear, not so much today, but the answer is that you will find me, the Christ, the Logos, with my disciples. Where they are, I am. Now there's a whole lot more other items that are going on in here, but there's one that I'd like to offer before we read it, and that's about the, the character Peter. Peter, for many of us in the other Gospels, talks about Peter being the rock and being the front end of the disciples. In John, Peter has a, different, a much different role. And here, this, what we have here is Peter is just a friend of Andrew. This comes along, and Peter is then redefined as, you know, no longer being called Cephas, but be called, but being called Cephas, be called, being called Peter. What is interesting here is that this is the first and primary piece. We'll later in the gospel see other disciples being invited in, but this is the core of the disciples, and they're all equal. Very different from Gospels that talk about kind of a hierarchy, like Peter being the head of the church, or where James was. For the Gospel of John, the writer of this Gospel, there's a sense that all disciples are one, coming around who this Jesus is. So let me repeat. Whether it's Jesus asking Peter or Andrew or the other disciples, for us in our time and in our place, the question still is relevant. As we read this gospel, there's an invitation to you and to me to come, to come and see. Let's read about the call of the disciples from John. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this. John's two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who had heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the anointed. And he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is a translation for Peter. Now the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him 
about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in which there is no deceit. Then Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. And Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Word of God, way of life. Thanks be to God. On this last Sunday of this Christmas season, we pray as we pray every Sunday for the church, for the world, and for all those in need. Guiding God, we cannot know what lies ahead when we start out in faith. Lead us forward in new and inspiring ventures and give us courage and strength to carry out all that you have planned for us to do. As we move towards the season of Epiphany, ignite and shine our lights brightly for your gospel, making us beacons of hope to a world awaiting the joyful message. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, creator of all things, Every being and form of life recognizes you, receives its life, its vitality, and its fruitfulness from you. Make this joyful recognition apparent in us as well, that we honor and respect our relationship with you, the world, and all created life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, your truth is life. Your word is healing. Lead us back to you when we wander, when we doubt, and when we crave the wholeness that you impart. Bring your blessings of healing and peace to all those on our prayer list and those we name at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do not always see the results of the prayers we offer, O Lord. May it be enough that you have heard us and that your Holy Spirit acts on behalf of all of who we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to the hungry feast. At this time, we will continue with the sacrament of Holy Communion. I invite you to have your bread and your crackers. If it's Christmas, I don't know what's left after Christmas pudding, if you so wish, but something of substance. And along with that, juice or wine, as these are two elements of who we are, and we use them in this sacrament that we call the Sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, for the wholeness of life. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever, and amen. And as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you at home to share the banquet. Come to the banquet for all is now ready. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son, and by your Spirit you strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Now may on this the last Sunday of Christmas for this season, may you continue to reap in all the love and joy of the Christmas holiday. And may the Lord continue to bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And may the Lord look upon, with, upon you with favor and give you eternal peace. Amen. Now, go into the world. Go with peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.